Hola y bienvenidos a Medical Spanish with Michael. So we know that there are a few acronyms to gather a history of the presenting illness. For example, like OPQRST or old carts. Uh, while I was preparing for this video, I actually found the acronym that medical providers in Spanish speaking countries use. Uh, and the acronym is Alicia Fredusa. Uh, I was so excited when I found this acronym and I'm so happy to share it with you and I'll reveal what it means at the end of the video. But without further ado, empecemos. Let's get started. So for the sake of simplicity in this video, we're going to use the English acronym OPQRST. So starting with O for onset, we know that we want to ask the patient, what were you doing when it started? So in Spanish, this would be ¿Qué hacía usted? Uh, what were you doing? ¿Cuándo empezó? And notice that this is a classic use of the two different past tenses in Spanish. Do you know which tenses these are in Spanish? So we have the verb hacer, which ends with an I with an accent mark and an A. And then we have the verb empezar, which ends with an O and an accent mark above it. Both of those verbs are in the third person because we're asking uh, usted, the U formal. So that verb hacer, if you're thinking that it's in the imperfect tense, because it represents a longer action, then you'd be correct. And also, empezar is in the preterite tense um, because it represents a shorter action that interrupts a longer action. So be sure to look out for these two different verb tenses in your patient's responses. So moving on to the P for provocation, um, we want to ask the question, is there anything that makes it worse? So in Spanish, we could say, hay algo que, is there anything that, lo agrave, that makes it worse or that aggravates it? Notice that the verb agravar is an AR verb, but here we use it with an E at the end. And that's because this verb is in the subjunctive tense, we have to use the subjunctive tense because we're asking about something um, that we don't know whether or not it exists. And again, in Spanish, the pronunciation is hay algo que lo agrave. So using that same structure and the verb aliviar for alleviate, then how would you say, is there anything that makes it better? Or is there anything that alleviates it? How do you think you would say that? So we would have the same beginning, which would be hay algo que, is there anything that, lo, and then we just change the aliviar, the a at the end, to an e in the subjunctive. Hay algo que lo alivie. Hay algo que lo alivie. And if you want to see a summary slide of all of these questions and phrases, then be sure to watch to the end and I'll include a nice summary slide that you can take a screenshot of so that you can study later. And now moving on to the Q for quality, we want to ask a couple of very simple questions. Can you describe it? So in Spanish, we would say, Puede usted, can you? Describirlo. Puede usted describirlo? Can you describe it? And we also want to ask, how does it feel? So in Spanish, this would be, ¿Cómo se siente? ¿Cómo se siente? How does it feel? And now talking about the R or region of the body, we want to ask, where in the body does it hurt or where do you feel it? So we'll ask literally, in what part of the body do you feel it? So this would be, en qué parte, in what part, del cuerpo, of the body, se siente, 
uh, is it felt? In what part of the body is it felt? En qué parte del cuerpo se siente? And then to ask, does it radiate throughout the body? Then we can say, se expande. Se expande. And optionally, we could say, por el cuerpo. Se expande por el cuerpo. And you can see that the verb expandirse in Spanish uh, translates to radiate. Uh, in Spanish when you're talking about the body. And talking about the S or severity, we want to ask the classic question on a scale of 1 to 10 with 1 being a little discomfort and 10 being a lot of discomfort, how bad is it? Then in Spanish we would say en escala del 1 al 10. So en escala del 1 al 10. Digamos que, let's say that, digamos que, uno es poca molestia, one is little discomfort, y diez es mucha molestia, and ten is a lot of discomfort. ¿Qué tan molestoso es? How bothersome is it? ¿Qué tan molestoso es? So, putting that all together, it would be en escala del 1 al 10. So, putting that all together, it would be en escala del 1 al 10. Digamos que 1 es poca molestia y 10 es mucha molestia. ¿Qué tan molestoso es? And some of you might be noticing a couple of new words like molestia, molestoso. So molestia and molestoso, um, no, these don't mean to molest. Um, molestia would be an annoyance or something that bothers you. And molestoso is an adjective, um, bothersome. So this comes from the Latin um, molestis, which means troublesome uh, and not to molest. And now the last letter, T for timing, we can ask a few questions. Um, we can say, how often does it affect you? So in Spanish, we would literally say, with what frequency does it affect you? So this would be, con que frecuencia, with what frequency, le afecta, does it affect you? Con que frecuencia le afecta? And then to say the question, how long does it last? In Spanish, this would be uh, por cuánto tiempo, for how much time dura, uh, lasts. For how much time does it last? Por cuánto tiempo dura. And then to say, is it getting better? We would say, está mejorando, está mejorando, or is it getting worse? We would say, está empeorando, está empeorando. All right, well done. Uh, you've studied all the phrases in Spanish for a history of presenting illness. And as promised, here is a summary slide so that you can take a screenshot of it and study all of those phrases later. Ready and now. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I found the acronym that medical providers in Spanish-speaking countries use for history of presenting illness. I found it in a PowerPoint for Cuban medical students. So let's take a look at what that acronym stands for. So you can see that A is aparición. So this is the appearance or onset. Um, L, localización, is the location in the body. E, intensidad, is intensity, severity. Um, C, is el carácter, uh, la cantidad, which would be related to the quality in English. E, irradiación, um, which would be radiation or expanding to the body like we talked about. A, alivio, so uh, relief or alleviating, um, and then 
FRE, which is frecuencia, the frequency, or ritmo, the rhythm, uh, DU, duración, duration, SA, symptoms, acompañantes, so accompanying symptoms, and H, horario, or the timing. So I hope that acronym in Spanish is useful for you with your um, medical Spanish studies. I will also include a link in the description to the PowerPoint as well as a reading that I found on the website for a medical school in Chile about history of presenting illness so that you can read about it in Spanish. That's all I have for this video. I hope you're able to learn some useful phrases to use with your next Spanish-speaking patient. Uh, muchas gracias y nos vemos en el próximo video.